They've all been using the same type of basic neural net algorithms, but uh, image recognition is very different than uh, translation, for example. And so a lot of our customers, we've been partnered with the most data intensive organizations on the planet, and those tend to be on the bleeding edge of AI because um, when you collect a lot of information and make use of it, that's usually not numbers or rows and columns of a database. That tends to be pictures and videos and sound and, and genomes. And for those, you need these new AI abilities in order to analyze them. Right, you talk about like uh, companies at the bleeding edge, which is using more sort of um, unstructured data. Um, that's the other word that you use yes. in your presentation uh, to uh, train some of these uh, AI models, right? Can you give a sense uh, for our audience uh, how that transformed the requirements when it comes to AI workloads, yes. right? Um, uh, versus, say, traditional sort of data. It's very different. Uh, unstructured means that we don't really know what's going on in there. It's a lot of files and objects that don't really exhibit any type of um, form. And so we need um, a new way of analyzing this information in order to give it structure. And so what we've built within the vast data platform, we built it to be very, very scalable because these uh, data sets are a lot larger than what computers were able to analyze before. Mm -hmm. And we built it to be very performant because these GPUs are now a lot hungrier for data than CPUs ever were before. But now that you have the ability to put all of your data on one platform and have all of it accessible at sub-millisecond latencies, mm -hmm. suddenly you can do things with your information that you couldn't do before. You can unlock its value. And so that first phase of what we built, the vast data store, is all about uh, providing a place for unstructured data to live. So you, you also mentioned at your presentation about performance versus uh, performance and scale, scalability and um, resilience versus pricing. Yes. Um, and you touch on scalability and performance, right? Um, so when it comes to resilience, right, a lot of people talk about, um, which you also mentioned uh, during our presentation and uh, the uh, uh, panel discussion earlier, cybersecurity and data protection, yes. right? And obviously, uh, when it comes to handling big amounts of data, that's something that's uh, extremely important. Can you tell us a bit about how, you know, AI is perhaps uh, transforming your thinking in that yes. area? I think even before AI, uh, data protection and resilience and security were major parts of the platform that we built. Um, everything from encrypting the data and providing different keys for different tenants and the ability to do authorization and authentication of users, mm -hmm. the ability to protect against ransomware attacks and then to uh, detect them and to roll back if something bad happens. Yeah. All of these pieces are inherent to the vast data platform. Mm -hmm. And that is what is allowing us to penetrate not just early adopters like hedge funds, but the largest banks in the world, the most regulated industries in the world, um, government agencies, these uh, security abilities are at the core of what we've built. What we're seeing now is that new abilities in AI are opening uh, new attack vectors and new threat vectors, and those require a new way of thinking about protecting uh, for data privacy, protecting for copyright infringement, protecting against things that didn't exist before because AI wasn't a thing yet. And I think a whole new industry is going to be formed mm -hmm. around AI security, just like cybersecurity That's was right. formed once the internet was available.